you guys are too kind, so thank you for that. But uh, before I start, before I start, I really wanted to you know, speak to you guys about something. I know you guys came here from, from all over the world. I met, met a couple of gentlemen from, uh, from India. You know, you guys invested a lot of money in, into being in this room. I know tens of thousands of dollars. I know you guys are away from your families. I'm away from my family. You're here, you know, trying to learn, trying to better your lives. So I've got nothing but respect for that. And, and the reason for that is because you took a chance on yourself. I have a lot of respect for people who bet on themselves. There is a lot of people who, who look at things as very risky. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll lose money. You know, maybe this is a scam. Maybe this won't work out. And they never pull the trigger. And I have a lot of respect and love for people that actually take a chance on themselves. So congratulate yourself because you, you took a chance on yourself. You guys bet on yourself. You guys risked judgment. You guys risked money. You guys, you know, more importantly, are spending your time just trying to better yourself. So congratulate yourself. And more importantly, look to the person right or left of you and tell them, hey, good job. I'll wait, you know. Yeah, there you go. That's what it's all about, you know. Like, I'm, it's it's the community, and you know, I really want you guys to be very proud of yourself. I know some of you are already making money, some of you are not, but that's okay. You know, end of the day, the first step is is believing in in your dreams, believing in yourself, and, and you've already taken the first step. So, nothing but love and respect for that. Having said that. Here's what we're going to do. We've got about an hour or so because me and Matt Schmidt have to actually catch a flight. So I'm going to try to uh, share the best of what I know. I told Peter, hey, you know what? If this was the last presentation I would ever do, and I really mean it, this is what I would want people to, to learn. So please pay a lot of attention. If your partner, if the person sitting next to you is, is you know, snoozing off, just slap them both, you know, <laughs> nice and easy and, and wake them up. All right. So just one little mic test. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. So look, here's what I am going to cover today. What we're going to be talking about is hacking the system, hacking in a nice ethical way to our, on our way to massive e-commerce profits. How many of you guys actually want to make massive e-commerce profits? Okay. Awesome, awesome. All right, there you go. So. A little bit about myself, why you should listen to me. I don't even know why, but I'll, I'll tell you guys why. I've, I've been online for four years, and you know, uh, almost four years after quitting my safety net job, uh, so to speak. I had a corporate gig uh, for about two and a half years, and close to six figures, where I just got tired of doing it day in, day out. And I was like, you know, there's, there's a better way to live life. And luckily, I was fortunate enough to find out about internet marketing. And you know, I, I took a chance on myself. I quit my job with about $10,000 in savings. Seven months later, I was broke. I was on food stamps. And it was because of a training I purchased from that guy in the corner of the room, Donald Wilson, uh, that changed my life. I'll forever be thankful, uh, thankful for that. Thank you, Don. And from there on, I got the focus. I, I wanted to make sure that, hey, you know, this is what I really want to do. And you know, like from there on, you know, we just took it on and you know, did over $10 million in, in l actually less than four years. So that's, that's that. Uh, and, and more importantly, it's not just like one thing I've done. I've, I've, I've created, four, uh, I've created my, my money, so to speak, in four different niches. So you know, it's not just, a, hey, you, know, you figure out one thing or one campaign and you run with it and you know, all of a sudden everything stops after that. What I have done and what I'm going to teach you guys is how to really become a better marketer so that you're not just a one-hit wonder, so that you actually know the system. You know, McDonald's has been selling burgers for like, I don't know, 60, 70 years, right? And, and that's because they know the system. There are so many restaurants that come and go. They've got much better food than McDonald's, but what they don't have is how to become a better marketer. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things, that's one of the goals I have for you guys today. And you know, I have my own fulfillment. You know, I, I print my own canvases. We chop our own words. We, we you know, put our own frames together. We print our own T-shirts. So, having been on that side of the game also has has allowed me a lot of insights that has allowed me to see this business in a different light. And that's some of the things I want to share with you guys. What I learned from that, and, and you know, how that could be applied to your business. And most importantly, I did all this by by be, you know, uh, by being a 
single father who's been very involved uh, in his kid's life. So there is nothing more important to me in this world than, than the ability to be able to spend time with my son. And, and you know, I hope, I hope that, you know, like after we're done with this presentation, you guys are also able to, to learn some of what I teach you, implement that, and kind of, you know, find what's important to you guys and, you know, be able to do that. So with that said, uh, let's get started. All right, so we're going to learn four things today. Man, I keep looking back, I, you know, thinking that this is the, you know, where I'm going to see something, but it's all here. So we're going to learn four things today. First is, what is disruption and why it's important for e-commerce? Do you guys see that on your screens? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. So we're going we're gonna to learn that. We're going to learn how to hack the system for tons of design ideas for print-on-demand business, print-on-demand products. You got to pay a lot of attention to that because I know if you pay attention to that, you will never run out of design ideas. I've got about 5,000 designs that I haven't even launched. So... Uh, you, 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 you'll have plenty of designs to launch. You'll know exactly what people want to buy and how to profit from that passion, how to profit from that demand that people are telling you, and how to let Facebook hand you the most lucrative audiences to sell to. That's another key one. I know a lot of people have designs, but they don't know how to sell. They don't know who to sell to. So we're going to be teaching you how to do that. All right, disruption. Why? Is it the key? Here's the thing. I want you guys to tell me something. When was the last time you went to Facebook thinking, you know what, I'm going to buy the most amazing cat t-shirt today? Never. Never, right? Where do you go to buy shoes? Okay. Yeah. So you don't go to Facebook, right, to purchase things? So why would your customers go to Facebook? Have you ever thought about that? But we're all, we're all in the market, and we're on the business of selling to our customers on Facebook. So the key is you have to disrupt their thought pattern. You have to stand out. So that's why, because we're not, even though we are selling on Facebook, we're really not selling on Facebook. What we're doing is, hey, we're stopping these people who are scrolling at the speed of light through their news feed. Hey, stop, take a look at my ad, click on it, take your credit card out, and buy the upsell also, and that's not an easy job. I've been doing this for four years, and that is not easy. The other thing is that we operate in, in so-called impulse economy. I actually just came up with this term today, so I just put it here in the presentation. So we need to learn how to trigger that. It's kind of like, it's, it's an emotion, and you need to learn how to trigger that. Hopefully we're gonna be able to cover some of that today, but that is the key, because we're selling on Facebook, at least, at least most of us in this room, because we're selling on Facebook, we have to know how to be able to do that. And because we're spending money on traffic, so we need to get the most out of that. You know, we're, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly don't come from wealth. And when I was starting out, I didn't really have a lot of money, so I had to, to get the most out of that money. And you know, even, even to this day, you know, you gotta be uh, in your budgets. I know Matt Schmidt talk about, talked about that uh, you know, a lot. So you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be careful because we're spending money on paid traffic. We have to, we have to disrupt the pattern. And the coolest thing is because you are disruptive, because what you bring to the table is is something that most other people don't. So you can compete with people like people that have big budgets. You can compete with big brands because when you know how to disrupt with your thought process, with your designs, with the way you advertise, it doesn't matter if you're competing against Zappos or somewhere, or if you're competing against some of these biggest sellers. If you know at its core what disruption is, if you know how to bake that into your marketing, you're going to be fine. So that is, that is why disruption is so important. Okay, actually... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you an example if the clicker would cooperate. All right. There you go. All right, so here's an example of, of a really disruptive design. And I'm telling you something really cool also about this design after we're done. So if you pay attention to your screen, if you pay attention to this design, you will see, actually it's right here. That's where I need to look, to my left. I fight what you fear. And at the bottom of the design, it says Alabama Brotherhood. And it's a firefighter design. It's got a very nice graphic of the 
firefighter flag inside the, the uh, outline of the state of Alabama. Now, this is a disruptive design, and that's disruptive because, first of all, there's not very many stores in Alabama that you can go and buy firefighter shirts. On top of that, you can't, fire, you can't find stuff that actually looks this good. On top of that, you have like this whole personalization for the people that live in Alabama. So that is, that is the key. The thing is, people, if they want to buy, let's say, a firefighter shirt, maybe they can go to Amazon, maybe they can find something, or maybe they can go to a local store if they're lucky, especially if they live in a bigger state like New York. But because we made it so custom, because this shirt speaks to their emotion, and they know that the only place that they can get this shirt is right here, right now. Guess what they're going to do? Buy it, right? There you go. So you guys, you guys understand how deception works? Okay, great. So I'm going to take a couple more examples. It's kind of like the same concept, uh, except that you know this is for police people. And again, as as the saying is, evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. And at the bottom it says California chapter. And you know again you got the uh, nice graphic of the uh, map of California with the uh, you know with the police police flag. So again, same concept, same concept, playing on a very similar emotion. It's talking about something that these people feel. Hey, you know, we think that the evil is powerless, uh, even is powerless if the good people are unafraid. And again, you know, like when you bake that into your marketing, you're going to be able to stand out from all these other people because that is something most people, you know, don't see in their newsfeed. All right, this one is actually one of my favorite ones. <laughs> Try pimping because tattooing ain't easy. You know, a lot of people think their jobs are difficult, you know? Uh, yeah. How many of you guys think your job, uh, if you have a day job, is difficult? Does anybody have a day job? Okay, what do you do, sir? Okay, do you think that's easy? So something like this would work pretty good for you, right? Okay, there you go. If it's going to work good for you, it's going to work for a lot of other industries. And here's the cool part about that. We did that for about 120 because once we find out the concept, we scaled it to everything. I actually printed one shirt for myself. It said, uh, try pimping because being a single dad ain't easy. <laughs> so not, every, not everything works. Obviously, most of them didn't work, but that's not the point. The point is you got to find something that people really feel and... You know, just put it in front of those people. So, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to take a wild guess and, and tell me how much money do you think we made with, with those three campaigns combined? Come on, play big. Now, we did about $400,000 in total sales when you combine all these things. And again, it's the simplest of the things. It's, it's, it's talking to their emotion. So, which brings me, somebody wants to read. How they feel, us, feel inside is what they be wearing outside. And the Abe, Cash Me Outside Lincoln, said it. So it must be true. And if I, were to, if I were to translate that in my own words, this is what I would say. The print-on-demand products are an outward expression of how they feel inside. If you really think about that, at its core, it's basically, I have something that I want people to know about me, whether that's a feeling, whether that's something cool that I do, whether that's you know, a profession, anything. End of the day, it's, it's an outward expression of how you feel inside. And when you start looking at products that way, you're going to start really digging deep into what people really want, what people really want to put on this. I have a really funny shirt. It says, I just look illegal. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I wear it to typically, you know, where, where I would expect a lot of, like, right-wing Republican people. N nothing against those people, you know. Or, or when I travel, you know, I should have wore it this, you know, to this conference. So I, I wear it, you know, because it's a lot of fun, and, you know. And, and people ask me a lot of questions about that shirt. So because I, I have that feeling, you know, because I know a lot of the times you go to places and people think, you know, hmm, I wonder if you're from here or not. And I, I just look illegal. I am actually legal here. <laughs> so... The next step that I want to show you guys is, is hacking the system for print-on-demand 
designs. How do you get an unlimited supply of designs? And I know a lot of people, a lot, you know, a lot of you guys were like, hey, you know, yes, I would want to learn that. So this is the time to pay attention. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here, and I'll actually try to pull up my computer screen. Ooh, that's very small. It's not the first time somebody's heard that. <laughs> so, guys, I don't, I don't know why you guys are laughing. Yet. All right, let's, let's talk about business now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick. Actually, two of those. So this website right here, how many of you guys have actually seen this website before, have heard about this website before, or actually bought something from this website? There you go. All right, only two people? That's it? Wow. No problem. Well, that means that it's a really cool thing because you're going to learn something really new today. So let's say if you wanna if you wanna you know go for go for the cat niche because seems like that's all the rage right now. All right, so let's say you go to this website, right? And as you scroll through here, you see that these people, this design has 6,900 likes. This design has 625. This cool cat has 1,624. I wish it was 1,738. I could actually make a joke about that. Uh, 1,981, 70. So you see all these cool designs, and again, I'm going to teach you how to, how to take inspiration from these designs. Don't steal. Obviously, that's not good. That's bad karma. I, I've been ripped off so many times, so I hate when people steal designs, but I'm going to show you a very cool way of, again, thinking like a marketer so that you look at something like this, and you'll be like, damn, I could spin this in 10 different ways. So we'll teach you that here in a second. But if you see here at the bottom, there is 100 plus pages. There's like 100 pages. And on each page, you got like, I don't know, 50, 60 designs. So that's like 6,000 designs you'd have to go through, right? Nobody has time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, right? Because you want to find out which one's the most popular. So what I actually have is, is this cool little app. Hopefully, it's still going to work. Uh, so I just click here, click to sort by number of hearts. And typically, this heart is a very strong representation of interest because not only is that a heart, these people actually have to have an account on this website, I think, you know, again, you know, I could be wrong, but I do think that they have to have an account on this website in order to go and heart it. That means that not only do these people have, have, you know, like just liked it, they also had to create an account. So it's a very strong indicator of interest, All right? And after, you know, the app has done its magic, you go over here and now everything is sorted by the number of hearts. So now what you can do, and again, you know, if you want to put in the manual work, it's no problem at all. So over here, now I have this, let's say if I want to, you know, if I want to talk about this design and see how this design could be used for your own designs, how would you guys take this design and create your own something that you know people already like, people already like, because obviously there is a very strong indicator of interest here. So how would you guys, how would you guys look at something like this and, and create something of your own? Go ahead. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Yes. Okay. She said, put the eyes upwards and then have like a, you know, a circle of words where you know, when you get hit on the head, uh, it's kind of like those stars, right? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, yeah, that, that's a very good one. That's a very good one, you know, like add a dialogue box. Yeah, so that's, that's actually what I would do too. Because now you're thinking like a marketer. You're looking at this. Hey, you know, here is a very strong indicator of interest. Here is this concept where it, it shows that this cute little animal is, is peeping over, whether that's a window or something. And that's something people really like. Now, cats are not the only pets people have. People have dogs. People have, like, I don't know, like all kinds of different dog breeds, like chihuahuas and everything. So you could take something that is cute and small, not me, uh, and, and put it here. So you could take something cute and small and put it here, and again, you have an idea. You have an idea based upon an emotion that people have already indicated to you that, hey, you know, I really like stuff like this, so how about you take this? Obviously, don't steal somebody's design. That's, that's not good, but you, know, you take this concept, and then you apply your touch, your, your marketing sauce to it, and that's how I want you guys to think. 
you know, do an exercise, you know, take a weekend off, go through like 40, 50, maybe 100, 200 designs, start putting your own thoughts into it. Hey, how would I turn this design around? If this was, you know, if, if I had my life on the line, or, you know, if I have to make $2,000 this weekend, and I have to come up with a really cool idea, and I have these 200 ideas that other people have already told me that they actually work, how would I change this? And when you start thinking like that, you start thinking like a marketer. And, and when you start thinking like a marketer, you become a good marketer. You know, one of my, one of my uh, mentors told me that, hey, you, your results, so whether that you want to become a millionaire, whether you want to become a millionaire, it's, it's a result of the process you have to go through. It's a result of who you become in the process. So if you want to be a millionaire, you can't just expect to become a millionaire by, by, you know, without having any qualities of a millionaire. And I think one of the, the most important qualities is, is learning how to market yourself. And that's, that's what it takes. So you have to become a better marketer. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys to another site, because I could spend the whole day on this thing, but obviously we don't really have a lot of time. So the next thing I want to show you guys is uh, another website, which is actually also pretty cool. Here, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my slide really quick. All right. So not only are you, going, are you guys going to learn about like how, how to take a design that's already there, but I want to show you guys how to dive deep into an artist's mind. It's basically looking inside somebody's mind and see, hey, you know what? This is his thought process. How many of you guys want to learn that? Come on, guys. Be excited. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're giving me the most important thing that you have, which is your time, and I'm giving you the most important thing that I have, which is my time. So please, let's, let's do this thing. If I can only spell. Yeah. All right, so... Do you guys see this site? Oh, there you go. Yes, you do. How many of you guys have heard about this site or know about this site? There you go. So you're learning something new. You're learning something very cool. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Explore button. And after you go to Explore, I see Matt Schmidt taking some notes back there. I'm going to go to Contest. Now, when you go to Contest, right, like if you want to dive into somebody's mind, you want to be able to find their best work, right? Not just like some work that they did when they were like half tired or, you know, not really motivated. You want to see, okay, if, if somebody's going to put their best work out there, what was he thinking? So this is what I'm going to show you guys. Uh, so here's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to one of these contests. The, the good thing about this website, Creative Allies, is that a lot of the people, a lot of big time celebrities, the, like Eminem, Maroon 5, all these people go there, give them a little bit of money and say, hey, look, I want I want your network of graphic artists, and these guys have access to like tens of thousands of artists. Hey, I want your network to, to create me an album cover or a t-shirt or, you know, it could be anything. And what they do is that they email their 80,000, 90,000 people, and, and, you know, they have a huge Facebook page, and they post, hey, you know, we're looking for somebody to create this t-shirt design for Maroon 5. And these are the specifications, and this is what you have. And what you will see that in about a week's time, People will come up with these amazing, I was like, sometimes I'm surprised, like, how do you even think about that? You know, it's like incredible designs. And when you look at those designs, you know exactly what the artist is thinking, and then you can take inspiration from that and create your own design. So I'm gonna, I'm just go through one of these examples here. Uh, uh, let me see, design. Design a t-shirt graphic for 311. Now, I have no idea what 311 is or who they are, but I'm just going to go and you know, click on it and see a few of the uh, you know, entries. So I guess it's a band. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't really know a whole lot about 311. OK. Yeah, 311. OK. So there you go. That's how much I know about this culture, which is very little. And if I can do it, you guys can do it too. So they're saying, hey, to celebrate 311's 311's upcoming summer tour, the band is inviting designers to create an official original 311 t-shirt, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and click on see all entries. And as you can see over here, now you have all these entries. And I don't even know how long this contest has been up, but right off the bat, you have access to all these amazing designs. 
And again, you could run these designs through the same exact process that I showed you guys in the first place. So if you were to create a design for 311, let's say you had licensing deals or you know, let's say whatever, you just wanted to create a design for 311, 311. Do you think you, you would be able to use this as a resource? Okay. How excited would you be if you had access to all these resources? Very. Doesn't seem like it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now, you know, if you click here, you can kind of like read a little more about the design. I know a lot of the designers do put in their, their feedback and, you know, like their story behind how they came up with it. A lot of people don't. Uh, but when you go through this, you'll be able to see that. And uh, you will see, okay, you know, Maybe it's a female character here. And again, pardon my ignorance here because I have no idea who 311 is. So if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna talk about these guys, I don't wanna sound like completely ignorant. So maybe like this is, you know, like some representation of female energy and you know, over here is like skull or devil or whatever. But you get the idea. The, the, the real fans would understand this. And when you go through all these different designs, now you understand, hey, you know what? This is a common theme. This is what people really like. This is something that the fans would really like. So now, instead of you starting from blank and having no idea on, on how to create something very cool, now you actually know exactly how to take somebody else's research. Not only that, just dive deep into their mind to see how an artist thinks and then create something original with your effort. And with, when you do that, when you do that, you're gonna be very, very successful. That is one of the first things I learned that is one of the first things I started implementing my, in my business, and that is one of my biggest competitive advantages. And today, you guys are, basically have access to that. So please do not forget to thank Chris Record for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back to my slides and see what we have next. Not the best when it comes to presenting. All right. So now, what I'm gonna show you guys is hacking the system for physical products. I know a lot of you guys do print on demand. A lot of you guys are also doing actual physical products, right? I know that like Damien talked about, you know, cat necklaces and everything, and you know, it's, everyone wants to sell physical, and even if you think about that, T-shirts are physical products too. These coffee mugs are physical products, so it's just that they're just print on demand. So I'm gonna show you guys something very, very cool. One of my biggest uh, secrets so far, and again, like I said, I told Peter, if this was the last presentation I'm ever going to do, I wanted you guys to learn about these things. So how many of you guys have actually heard about Vanilo.com? Okay, so, so about a few people, okay. There you go. Don, you know everything, man. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys Vanilo and see how you can actually find some very cool and very profitable stuff. All right, so let's look into jewelry, right? And if you guys like what you're, what you're seeing here, go ahead and implement it right away because you guys are going to be excited about things. You guys are going to have the momentum, so don't, don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. Just, just go, go back to your hotels, find a corner, and start working on it because I know when you, when you build the momentum, that is, that is when you really start to succeed. You know, my biggest problem, and I'll be very honest, is, is not creating momentum enough time. Sometimes I get very lazy. Hey, you know, I'll just go play baseball, or I'll just go play cricket, or you know, maybe I'll work tomorrow. And please don't be that person. So if we see here, we see like all kinds of jewelries, and you know, it's got like 662,000 products, and you know, all that stuff. What does that mean? You don't really know? I don't really know, but I'm gonna show you something cool. Click to sort by number of saves. And again, you do all this stuff manually, it just takes a little longer time, and you know, for, for, you know, for the ease, we actually built the app ourselves. I was like, you know, I don't wanna spend this much time working on this thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and pay someone to build the app for me. Luckily, uh, one of the uh, closest friends that I have, he's, he's a developer, so he just created something cool for us. So give, give it another, I don't know, a few seconds, and you'll see some magic here. How many of you guys think that what you're seeing today, what you're learning today, is actually fresh new content? It's not some repur repurposed stuff. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I wanna make sure, because end of the day, like I said, I wanna make sure that you guys are learning something new. It's not just like the same old stuff over and over again. I hate that, so I would never want to teach that. All right, great, so 100%. And let's see, 
All right, there you go. So now, as you can see, everything is sorted by the number of saves. You got 341,000 saves on this one, and they're selling for five bucks. So you could probably get this for about 10 cents from China, and run it as a free plus ship offer, get a bunch of customers, and I don't like you guys know all kinds of other stuff too, what to do on the you know the back end, but this is this right here. The second one is 81,000 saves and $58. So imagine this, if, if people want to pay, if people really like something that costs $58. And, and again, that is a very strong indication, right? 81,000 81, saves, do you think people actually have slight interest in the thing? Right? Do you think people would, would be willing to pay instead of 58 if you, if you put a good deal in front of these people, maybe like 1995? Come on, guys. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, let's wake up. I know it's I know it's late. I know you guys gotta go, I gotta go, but but you know, like let's keep it conversational. You know, i I feed off of you guys' energy, so give me some. There you go. There you go. Alright, great. So take take a wild guess and think how much it's gonna cost you guys on AliExpress. Now again, let me be very clear. This might actually be somebody else's trademarked item, so please obviously do not use somebody else's trademark. Do not use their logos or anything, but there is very cool stuff like, just like this available that is not trademarked. So if, if, you, if you spend a little bit of time doing proper research, you're gonna be able to find that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go, if I click here, it takes me direct to AliExpress, and now I can find stuff like that. And there you go, for like 79 cents. So you think if you buy something for 79 cents and sell it for 19.95, you'll make some money? Okay. There you go. If you scroll through here, like this one right here, this doesn't have any logo. You don't need to worry about this one at all, right? And this one is $1.25. This one right here is the Karma necklace. Pay close attention. This right here is $1.25. And I bet if you negotiate with these people like Indian people negotiate, you'll be able to get it down for 75 cents. <laughs> she said, yeah, very fast. Like, it looks like you've got a lot of experience negotiating with us. Now let me show you guys how much it's selling. All right, Karma necklace, there you go. $86, $86, 86 American dollars. That's a lot of money. For $29, I could go from St. Louis to Denver. So $86, I could eat, I could leave my home, I could go to Denver, I could probably smoke a joint and then come back. So, $86, a lot of money. People are willing to pay for this, and you can buy it for $1.25. And, and that is how you find these opportunities to make money. It's not by doing the exact same crappy looking cat necklace. Again, I always say cat because it's like thing to talk about. Everybody talks about it, so I just talk about it too. Kind of make, gives me a really good reference point. But if you're going to be doing things that everybody else is doing, you're going to get the results that everybody else is getting, which is not making any money. So we're here to make money. We're not, we're not here to you know, just do what everybody else, else is doing. So this is, again, you know, we go through a lot more detail, but unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of time because I want to be able to answer some of your questions also after this. But you got the idea. Now, here's the cool thing. You know, if I just want to put, actually, I'll just go back to Vanilla. If I just want to put, instead of jewelry, just cat jewelry, now I can see all the very popular cat jewelry also. So now instead of just finding something a little more generic, you have something very, very specific. Now you don't have to worry about, you don't have to think about, hey, you know which cat necklace is actually going to sell the most? I know exactly which one's going to sell. All I got to do is just click here on my app that I aptly named Nabster because it nabs all the research and you know we're in business. How do we get it? Uh, Let's talk to Chris, uh, talk to Peter, just let them know. They'll, they'll be able to get you guys something. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to how to use Facebook like a crystal ball. How many of you guys think this is a funny design? We made a lot of money on this design. Now, I have no 
political affiliations, I have, you know, like me and Matt were actually having a really good conversation about this yesterday. I'm like, we're kind of like in the middle, you know? We, we, we like keeping our guns, but at the same time, if, if gay people want to get married, we have no problems with that. So, when, when this whole thing blew up, when people were protesting and everybody wanted to basically bash Donald Trump, I know a lot of people started to like rally behind him. And they're like, hey, woo hoo, you know, we're going to show our support, to, our support to, uh, to, to the president. And I saw in some of these groups, that people were, you know, like, hey, you know, they hate us because they ain't us. Yeah, these people, these liberals, these Democrats, we don't like them anyways. And I know Matt had a really good shirt on, on a very similar term. They hate, they hate us because they hate us. Right, Matt? So basically, you, you take something that has worked in the past, which is this concept of us versus them. And America is built on that, us versus them, you know? So I took that design. And we put that in a funnel, and in one week we did over thirty thousand dollars in sales. Selling these shirts for nine ninety five, not not nineteen ninety five, not fourteen ninety five, nine ninety five, and actually made a lot of money, made a really good profit. And then we obviously have all these things at the back end. We'll we'll just keep it to the end. Here's the other thing, again cat necklace. So here's what I want to do, guys. I want to show you guys how to actually target for that. Because I know different people have, have different ways for targeting. And again, some things work for some people, some things work for other. This is one of the things that worked for us. So I'm going to take you into one of my test accounts and show you how I would target. Would you guys be interested in, in that? Like if I show you? OK, cool. All right, so here I am inside the Ads Manager, right? And here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep the age group at 18 to 65. We're going to keep the gender at you know, both male and female, because I know when it comes to Donald Trump, everybody buys. And here's, here's one of the first things I would do. I would go to my detailed targeting. And under, uh, here's actually, I don't even have to go inside demographic. Now, how many of you guys are actually familiar with this screen? I want to make sure you guys even know what I'm talking about. OK, so the plenty of people. OK, great. And if not, go through some of the, you know, the basic Facebook ads training, because I think that would really help you guys a lot. So what I would do is I would go to a behavior that very few people know about, and that is donating to political causes, donating to conservative political causes. Now, until now, it's kind of the easy part. Most you know, I know a lot of people know that. And, and these are the people, you know, how many million? Three million of these, basically these three million people have donated to conservative political causes and Facebook knows about it. There's a lot more people that donate to the conservative political causes, but Facebook obviously doesn't know about everyone, every one of those. When you go here, Facebook knows these three million people are the ones. Now here's where it actually gets interesting. What we do is we click on narrow audience, how many of you guys know about the flex targeting or the narrow audience? OK, cool. Because again, I want to make sure what I talk about is actually making sense to you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of my favorite websites, which is, no, I'm just kidding, Breitbart.com. And now you have 230,000 very vocal people. Because again, it is, oh, yes. <laughs> The shirt, the design, is an outward expression of how these people feel inside, which is they hate us because they ain't us. And, and that is, these are the 230,000 very passionate, very vocal people that have donated to conservative political causes. And you know, obviously, Facebook knows about them. So what we're going to do is, I know, again, different people have different ways of targeting. And you know, some people like to have these huge audiences. I always like to start small. Because that way, I know if the campaign is not working with a very super targeted audience, it's probably not going to work with a very broad audience either. So what I would do is at this point, I would go ahead and start setting up my ads and find out if the campaign has, has any potential, has any juice or not. And that is one of the things we do. So we go into some of these behaviors and essentially let Facebook tell us, hey, there is an audience for this or there is no audience for this. And when we know there is an audience for that, we go after them. So 
always go through these behaviors, and I know different marketers have different opinions about it, but obviously this is something that has worked very, very well for us in the past, and, and that is something I would highly encourage you guys to go through that. Now here's the second thing I want to show you. So we talked about that cat design, right? Let's say if we find that cat necklace, and again, we're back to like 224 million people, not everybody out of those 224 million people want to buy a cat necklace, right? At least not when we're just starting out. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go, I am gonna go and target cat owners. Again, that is a behavior, not the interest, because there is two things here. There is an interest and there is a behavior. And again, if you go through interest, you'll be able to find all these things. So what I'm gonna do is put cat owners as one of the behaviors now, when you know it's a behavior, that means Facebook has a lot more, lot more data on these people. Second thing what I would do is I would put narrow audience again, and I would uh, say put jewelry as a behavior. And now I have an audience of 1.4 million people that Facebook knows about, that these people have a tendency to spend money on jewelry related products and also our cat owners I mean if we want we could drill it down even further we could just take it to like cat products and then we're gonna have like I don't know 400,000 people but if you have a good pixel you can start with this or if you want to narrow further I could go down here put another behavior cat products and now I have 1.3 million people so now at this stage I could start running these campaigns because I know that this audience is very, very passionate. I've dated a couple of girls that were very passionate about cats. And I can tell you this, they are passionate. They, they like spending money on cat products. So this is what I would do. Go super targeted, start with that, and when you, when you start with something that super targeted, you know that you're giving yourself the best chance of success. And and I say this to you guys because I am assuming that most of you guys don't really have a lot of data on your pixel. Most of you guys haven't pushed tens of thousands of sales. So you don't have that advantage of a mature pixel. So especially if you've made like less than thousand sales or, or maybe a few hundred sales, I would, I would personally start with something super, super targeted. So that is, that is what I would do. How many of you guys think it actually makes sense? Okay, great, great, awesome. So let's see what we have next. Got this. Do you guys think if, if you find a dog necklace that you think is gonna be like really cool, do you think you're gonna be able to target now? Yeah. Okay, great. So what we learned today is, is what is disruption and why it is important for e-commerce. Again, I promise you guys, it's not gonna be one of those long drawn presentations teaching you every single detail about how to set up a pixel or how to you know do this or that it's going to be about how to become a better marketer how to think like a marketer because i think that's what's going to keep you in the game for a lot longer than any trick or any hack can how to hack your system for tons of design ideas for print on demand products how to know exactly what people want to buy and profit from that and again using vanilla as a source and how to let facebook handy the most lucrative audiences to sell to so guys, that was it. I told you guys it's gonna be quick. Thank you guys. Hell yeah. Question, yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, uh, so let me know. And let me actually take a look at the time. Can, you, can somebody please tell me what time it is? 4.40, okay, so we got, yeah, we got about 18, 20 minutes. I got plenty of time. So, so I know that, that the app was mentioned, and obviously I think everybody in the room wants that. <laughs> so um, I don't know if there's a, a way to, to um, arrange with you to get that app. I would talk to Peter. Uh, talk to Peter. I'm sure he'll, he'll figure something out. Yeah. Let's pass it already. Uh, hi. Um, is there a reason why you pick behavior over interest? Um, yes. Okay. The reason for that is because that is a much more uh, qualified data, and that's what I want to go after. You know, we've tested interest also, but I think 
you know, if I see a funny cat video and I just want to see like what these guys are selling, I might go and like their product. Doesn't mean I actually would want to wear a cat necklace. Uh, at the same time, if I do have a behavior, if I engage in the activity of purchasing cat products, I know I'm only buying that because I care about cats or I have a cat, so that's why. Nishant, yeah. um, as far as the Facebook pixel is concerned, uh, the retargeting pixel um, that we'll be putting on the site, uh, you know, um, I, I was just researching it and it seems like uh, there's no different retargeting and conversion pixel now. It's just one pixel and there are events which are associated. Most probably it's done to avoid the code bloat. That's what my assumption is. And I may be wrong, but my question to you would be um, that, you know, let's say if I, uh, I'm retargeting the audiences uh, who have visited my website uh, in the last 15 days and I create that pixel today, it's going to slowly be building up the audiences. Okay, so will I have to wait for 15 days in order to run a campaign that is targeted on that retarget audience or is it going to go backwards and 15 days it knows, you know what traffic website, uh, Facebook has sent over to my website so that I can start retargeting? Yeah, so what we've done in cases like that where let's say if we forgot to put the pixel and then we go back and say, hey, you know, find me everyone who visited my site in past 30 days typically within like an hour or so, it already populates that list. Uh, and again, I don't know exactly how pixels work. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I haven't even set up a pixel myself in probably like six months. Uh, I, I, I'm more involved in, in my business uh, on, on like the creative side or the direction side, which actually not, is not always the best idea. You, you, have to, you, know, you have to be involved in every step of the process, almost all the steps if you can, but uh, not going into the details. Uh, that yeah, that that's that's what I would do. But I have done that. Uh, you know, typically, if if you go and paste, if you go and say, hey, you know, just create this audience for me for past 30 days traffic or past 15 days or whatever, uh, I think I think you will be able to use that traffic. Uh, and again, I know there is a lot more experts here. Uh, you know, who will tell you a lot more about that because they do this every single day. I don't do the small, detailed stuff like setting up pixels. Yes. Hey, uh, thank you for. Tremendous value, great stuff, You're thank you. Uh, so, do you have a resource for those 9.99 t-shirts that we can make a profit on? Ah, uh, you know, I'll let Peter know. <laughs> you know, here's, here's, here's what it brings me to, and I wanted to share this yesterday, I just forgot about it, I forget a lot of things. Uh, and uh, the thing is, when, I, when, I, when we were talking, when, when Chris asked me this question, hey, you know, when you're, when you're at the seven figure level, or are you at the expert level, what are some of the things you would do at that time? What we did was we actually invested in our own machinery. We, like, we have our own canvas printing. We have like, our own workshop where we chop our own boards, create our own frames. And I have a partnership with a printer where I invested in some of his printing equipment. So now I get the rock bottom prices on, on pretty much everything. It's basically at cost. So that's how um, I was able to create this competitive advantage for myself. Now I'm sure you guys know people. or You guys, if you really try hard enough, it's actually not that difficult. So. Yeah, so that, that's what I did. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Nishan. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you so much for this outstanding value. Uh, my question is relating to print-on-demand products. If you're starting with, say, platforms like uh, Viral Style, Teespring, or Gearbubble, now, since Facebook gives you just one pixel these days, um, how do you overcome the problem of convolution of pixels? You'll be targeting different niches, maybe every uh, week or every month. In that case, how do you groom your pixel to that particular niche? Well, you, you do the custom conversions. So you just create these events for everything. So I could say, this event means add to cart on a cat niche. Uh, and you know, that way, you, I think you get 40 of those. Right, Brandon? You get 40, right? OK, so you get 40 of those. Brandon, by the way, is a Facebook ads expert. He knows a lot more about Facebook ads than I do. So uh, he might be a you know, good resource uh, to follow. But you know, like, what we do is we create these custom events. So say, for example, if it's you know, like the soldier niche or the army niche, we, we name it army add to cart. So that way, anytime I have to run a campaign on army and I want to optimize my ads for add to cart, we just use that as an event. And again, like I said, you know, guys, this is not you know, the exact science. I wish I knew the exact science. I just don't. You know? But what it is, it, it works. And you know, it, it's worked for me for past you know, however long they've, they've rolled it out for. So. That's what I would do. I, I would, you know, optimize for, for these events. Good. Yes. What, what that? It could be anything. My best, one of my best campaigns in terms of ROI 
was an audience of 2,500 people that I sold 180 hoodies. So uh, there's no such thing as too small. Yeah. Yeah. The, you Hi. Could, you, yeah, you could, you could go, you know. If it works, it's not small. Hi. Thank you uh, for sharing your knowledge with us. I really appreciate it. And uh, I have a question regarding your choice of behavior over interest in the Facebook. Does that increase the price at all, of the cost, I mean, of the uh, advertisement? To be honest with you, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to that. Typically, this is what I look at. I don't worry about these small details. I don't sweat the small stuff. What I sweat is, hey, am I making money or not? Because end of the day, if you're not making money, it doesn't matter if you're paying 50 cents CPM. Or I could care less about paying $50 CPM as long as I'm making money. And that's all you got to pay attention to. If you're making money, that's all that matters. So don't worry too much about, hey, I'm paying too much for the CPM. That, yes, you should pay attention to that when you get to the level where you're, you're you know, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in ads. Yes, that stuff is important, but it's not important for someone who's just trying to make their first thousand, ten thousand dollars. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Going one, going two, going three? All right, there you go. I think he's got a question. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Like I said, thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> guys, let's give Nishani another huge round of applause, man, for crushing it.